Some people dream of seeing the skyscrapers of New York and standing in Times Square or visit the Eiffel Tower of Paris. But for me it's the things we can't see, that's not in front of us, the ones we have to go out and search for. The most unique and colorful that has evolved over millions of years in our nature on Mother Earth. And one of those can be found right at our doorstep here in the Philippines. That is the Blue Ring Octopus. This is the day we found him. is in the house. It's going to start cutting the barrel. We're going to cut them in half and then they're going to be our scuba diving rinsing station. Alright, Alex just finished cutting one in half. These are just going to be used for like our gears, boots, maybe one for camera, my camera because it's quite tall. But this one here, we're gonna have an extra deep one. That's where we're gonna dip in the BCDs. That's our whole kit with all the air. So we need one that's really deep. And then we have to uh, clean it up a little bit. What's up? Nice one. Well, so we got regulators, some equipment, clothes, and the BCDs. Very good. Thank you, Alex. And I don't know if I showed you guys, but here we made a shower. Already used that a couple of times. And here's the hose connected to the shower as well, where we can uh, put some water in here. Already had some tanks. We had about 20 tanks so far. Very nice. <laughs> Plastic, non biodegradable, biodegradable, paper, glass. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the gears we <laughs> Alex joked to Felix about it. <laughs> he was like, What? <laughs> so, this is for BCD, BCD, camera, wetsuit, pins. Regulator. A regulator. Mm. You can have. You can walk. You can swing. You can swing. Remember the uh, pole was kind of bending in the middle, so we're yeah. gonna hang up the heavy ones here to balance it a little bit. So all the weight is gonna be, be here. To be balanced. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, baby, like this. <laughs> that. So yeah, you can do that. The, the Science, guys. Science. No scoop up, no tuba. That only means one thing. It's a scuba day. In paradise. Good morning, good day, Hunter. I feel like it's an octopus kind of day. Did yeah. I get? Yeah, it's an octopus day. We're gonna go to one spot. I'm gonna try to show them where I found the Motiti octopus. Motori. Motori. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. Motori. <laughs> And then we try to do a border corner at the end of the dive. It's uh, one of the best dive guides here is leaving to Switzerland, Junior. And uh, so we're gonna do three dives to with, today with him before he goes back to Europe for work.
Nearly perfect conditions today, almost glassy, nearly no waves, sun sun. Oh, look at that, we got the, we got the rink. You see the rink around the sun? That's because rain is coming. We're now here at the dive site called Basak. Basak means a rice field. Uh, the back of this, uh, the beach is a rice field. Ah. So that's a uh, Basak, Basakan. Ah. It's so strange out of the hundreds of dives that I've done before in the Philippines that I've never seen these ghost pipefish and here on pretty much every single dive we've seen loads of them and at least a couple of beautiful nudie pranks and it's almost like if you don't find any of them you'll be pretty disappointed with diving here down but I guess we're just so spoiled here in the Philippines and especially here in Daoin that it is one of the best, world's best. And it's also very common to find one of these anchor with coral shrimps which are not so common but on pretty much every coral like that we find some. Here we got some couple of common nudies we've been seeing around and my favorite ornate ghost pipefish. Not in this color but the transparent one. And we've been seeing so many frog fishes lately. If we see some common black or white ones, we just skip them. But this one was quite hilarious because if you look closely, he is surrounded by his <laughs> skeleton friends. And like Justin said in one of his videos, these guys are either the bravest or the dumbest shrimps out there. Because these shrimps are pretty much the frogfish snack. So I decided to film this guy for quite some time and see if it would swoop up one of these shrimps. But look at these guys, they're, they're so funny movement. I don't know if they're talking to each other or communicating or, or if they're just cleaning themselves or feeding, standing right in front of the frogfish that might swoop them up in a second. But I guess they were just lucky this time. And if you haven't seen already, the frogfish have this lure on top of their nose and that's how they catch some of their prey. I haven't been able to capture yet a shot of them using the lure and snapping up some food so hopefully soon we'll get a shot of that and here's yet another frogfish absolutely tiny one as you can see the gopro in the background and that was pretty much it for this dive super awesome and later on we get into the blue ring dive I would say that was kind of standard dive, yeah. nothing too crazy, only three frogfishes, two nudies, four, five, six pipefish, ghost pipefish, <laughs> kind of average dive. For you guys in the States, <laughs> I know we sound spoiled, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> guys, America's my western friends, soon, this will keep you uh, give you the nostalgia. Yeah. But look at this, We're, it's actually raining for yeah. once. Typhoon. Did you see? Welcome to our uh, second dive. We call this one uh, La Torre. La Torre it means tower. Because we will see a tower in around 20 to 25 meters. So maximum depth is around 25 meters. We're going down to the tower, maybe up to 30, 33 meters. Then we go back to the rocks, we're gonna try to find some flamboyant, maybe some octopus. Ready? And for the second dive, we dropped down in a dive site called the Tower. We've been here many, many times before because we want to find the Harlequin Shrimp. But unfortunately, we haven't seen any of those in Down yet. Oh, and here's my favorite ornate ghost pipefish. The reason why he's so transparent right now is because he's in his juvenile stage and later on he's gonna transform into the color of its surroundings. And 
this guy is actually on the front cover of a book we used to identify a lot of the creatures. Oh, and here's another shot of another black frog fish using his lure. Yet again, guys, we didn't see him catch anything with his lure. Then we stumble upon one of my favorite critters of all. Can you guess? Yes, the flamboyant cuttlefish. And as I was speaking about the frogfish using his lure to hunt, those are a bucket shot we want to capture. Those are the shot that might get featured in National Geographic. So here we got the flamboyant hunting with his tongue, I guess. <laughs> and my very first time capturing on camera him feeding. Check this out. Even if you dive the same locations a few times, you never know what the creatures are going to do down there. So we were super happy with this dive. Yeah, got a fish. <laughs> oh, I think we got a footage of them hunting. Did yeah, you get two like clips of that? Yes! That's our bucket list with the flamboyant. Yes. I think I've got a couple of shots of them feeding, yeah? Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> nice one. Awesome. All right, surface interval is almost done. We had a lovely meal and we were also talking about our top 10 bucket list of mine that I want to see here in Darwin. And as you guys know, we already crossed six out of the top 10. And we just had a big discussion on uh, Justin's channel if you want to see that. And we talked about it's going to be impossible probably to see one of the four remaining one. And that is the Mimic Octopus. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But to be honest, if we get nine out of the top ten just in this one location, uh, it's insane. We'll That's be more so cool. than happy with that. But we're going to try to find the uh, definitely the Blue Rink, Harry, and Harlequin. That's like almost guaranteed they are here, but we just have to find them. But the Mimic, we might have to pass. <laughs> but we'll, we'll definitely see it someday. Yeah. We're, as soon as the borders open, we're going to go hunting. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the boat and we're gonna do an octopus <laughs> dive. It's not my favorite, it's probably my least favorite dive site in Dawen, but it's also supposedly one of the rarest stuff uh, out here and hopefully no current. So Barnett's Corner, here we come. <laughs> And we get into our third dive, the bonus corner, and we keep saying that it's probably one of our least favorite dive sites because there's always or almost always a crazy current, so it's really hard to balance, keep your buoyancy, and film things. But then again, we keep finding something we've never seen before. And this dive was one of the best. And 
here we capture this eel swimming around, which we I've never seen before. They're always in their holes waiting. But here we have him out of his hole hunting for food. And what he's basically doing is using his nose by both sensing any movement in the sand or even sniffing. Believe in this shot, he actually got something before he moved back into his hole. And then in the next shot, Junior, our dive guide from Sea Explorers, spotted something amazing. He found the blue ring octopus. extremely hard to film him because the current was so strong and he decided to go along with the current so we had to be filming him while drifting. So you can imagine the excitement, the adrenaline, trying to keep up with the current and balancing the camera all at the same time while filming the blue ring. And if you didn't know, he is the, one of the world's most venomous creatures out there. The potent of the venom from the blue ring is thousand times stronger than cyanide. So strong that it can kill up to 26 humans within minutes. And there's no anti-venom. So if you ever see them, never ever touch or pick them up. The same goes with all creatures. Just leave them alone. Philippines is so lucky to have all of these creatures, marine life underwater, and I believe it's an untapped market for the future. And it's just amazing how much beauty we have above water, but in my opinion, we might even have better underwater. Anyways, I can't believe we found the blue ring after doing like 40, 50 dives without seeing one, but we did it. The current is crazy. It's going oh, down, up, down, whirlwind. You know what the, my favorite thing about finding that blue ring is? We don't have to come back to this freaking site. Yes! <laughs> no more. <laughs> Maybe if we're hairy. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Woo. Wow. I can't believe it. I don't know if you heard anything from the GoPro, but we are full of excitement. We just want to get some words out, some expressions after seeing the blue ring. My first one ever. Never seen one before. I can't how believe how tiny it was. Absolutely. Yeah, tiny and uh, not so cooperative. He kind of <laughs> went upwards, forwards, but then we kind of just let him go. But that was good enough footage. So I filled up my com camera. I think Jesse got some good footage of it as well. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I told him I'm not even gonna make an episode unless we uh, find the blue ring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we hate this dive site. So much current, such a workout. We never see anything. We went downward, upward, back downward, and then into a whirlpool, all in the same dive. Crazy. And then we're trying to film the stupid blue ring in all this. So we're like sticking our sticks yeah, in the ground, trying to hold on while we're filming. 
but you don't yes. see it guys i'm holding my big rig yeah big rig and the other hand in the sand trying to not move <laughs> crazy current trying but to aim at it the top, lighting top everything. tailor top tailor absolutely crossed up and thanks to jr jr yes Thank you so awesome. much. <laughs> Welcome. His last dive. <laughs> and it ends at the top. Sorry, it's not tuba, but it's also <laughs> SMP. It's also good. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any tuba right now. So no tuba. <laughs> <laughs> no tuba. That's good. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. For the blue ring. We deserved it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>